Bill Derrick back with Mark Boudreau from the Hartford Civic Center in Hartford, Connecticut, where the halftime score is Minnesota 37, Connecticut 33. And here is the quick official halftime statistics. Minnesota being led by Brent Tucker, as we said earlier, he is shooting a phenomenal 8 for 9 from the floor. He has 18 first half points. Coming in after that will be Mark Hall and Gary Holmes with six points apiece. Three points for Randy Brewer, two each for Zebedee Howell and Daryl Mitchell. For the Huskies, they are led by Chuck Alexinis, who is six for seven from the floor. After that comes seven points by Bobby Doolin, two for two from the floor, three for four from the foul line, six for Mike McKay, four for Cornelius Thompson, and four for Vernon Giscombe. With second half right now is ready to be underway. Huskies going from left to right as we view it, and the Gophers of Minnesota going from right to left. Randy Brewer will be jumping against Chuck Alexinis and second half play-by-play -play for the second round action in the National Invitational Tournament is underway. Tap up and control by the Gophers. A pass on the right side for Hall. He lays it up and in right past Bobby Doolin. It was a beautiful play off the tip and Minnesota takes a 39-33 to lead on the shot by Mr. Hall. So the score... A six-point lead, and the Huskies have the ball. Doolin with the ball, top of the key, passing the right side to Norman Bailey. Bailey down low to Alexinis, tipped away by Brewer, but they're going to say last touch by Alexinis, and the Minnesota team will get the ball right back. Huskies, full court, man-to-man -man pressure, as looking in by the ball is Gary Holmes. Holmes gets it in to Trent Tucker. Tucker passed down, stolen by Cornelius Thompson, and coming back with it the other way will be the Connecticut Huskies. Bobby Doolin, bounce pass left side to Mike McKay. Top of the key to Doolin. Doolin shooting from the top of the circle. It's in and out. Rebound down low by Gary Holmes, and Minnesota is off and running. This is Tucker on the left side going around. Doolin and puts it up and in for his 20th point of the game. Tucker is just steaming hot. He is 9 for 10 now from the floor. He has kept Minnesota right now to a 7, 8-point lead. It's Minnesota 41, Connecticut 33. And the referee wants to check the ball. He's, he thinks it's lopsided. And yes, he does say it's lopsided. They want a new basketball. And they will get a new basketball. So Connecticut will inbound the ball right in front of the press row right around half court. As Trent Tucker now checking the ball out. Dribbling it a few times. This is a brand new ball. Maybe the other one was just a little bit too hot for Trent Tucker who is 9 for 10 from the floor. 20 first half points. The man is just amazing. Connecticut. Halewski is getting on the board. For the first time in 2 minutes and 56 seconds, it's Minnesota 45, Connecticut 35. Tucker inbounding the ball and guarding him is Mike McKay. McKay looking for another man as Bailey takes Tucker this time. Tucker dribbling with his left hand towards the middle. Pass on the left side over to teammate Trent Tucker. Tucker down low over to number 45, Randy Brewer. Excuse me, that was Zebedee Howell. And there's a whistle on the play. And a turnover, and the Huskies will get the ball on the travel violation. So... Vernon Giscom coming down the other way. They got to cut this Minnesota lead. The crowd now starting to go for the Husky team. This is Thompson, top of the key. Left side of Mike McKay. McKay dribbles once. Jumping from 20 off the boards for two. McKay hits. He is hot. He is now has eight points on the game. And Tucker brings the ball across half court. Tucker over to Hall. Hall being guarded by Giscom. Passing the left side over to Gary Holmes. Holmes out and around and underneath the Brewer. Brewer tries to put the pass down low, but it's knocked away and controlled by Mike McKay. McKay on a two-on-one break. Dribbling a little too much. Pass over to Bailey. Knocked away. We're going to have a call, a travel call on Mike McKay as he dribbled about 20 feet too much. And we're going to have a timeout for the Minnesota Gophers. So with 16 minutes and 11 seconds to play here at the Hartford Civic Center, we will break for this with the score of Minnesota 45 and Connecticut 37. Circle. But there's a foul called away from the ball on Gary Holmes. As Holmes denied Chuck Alexinis the room he needed underneath. And Holmes quickly picks up the Gophers' 15 foul. Not a very intelligent foul down low, but the Huskies will get the ball out underneath their own basket. Second foul on the night for Gary Holmes. We'd like to thank Al Connor for being back at the station engineering this game for us while we have this timeout. Remember, 10 o'clock it'll be Panorama on the sound alternative. Mike McKay right side, he drives baseline, but another foul called. This time on Trent Tucker. To the crowd's pleasure. He followed Mike McKay as he was driving. Team foul number six. Smart play by the Huskies and by McKay. And another one, and we'll see the Huskies going to the line, and they might just do that right here. Doing top of the key. He is called for a travel. Bad call by the referees. As he faked up, kept his foot on the ground, but the referee said you moved it a uh, half an inch, and he gets the travel call. Another turnover. In the first half, the Huskies out turnovered the other team 10-7. to 7. 
And they look like they're doing it again here in the second half, and that's what's going to be killing them so far. They are down by 14 points. They got to get back into this game. Hall with the ball, guarding man-to-man by Bobby Doohan. Hall driving down the right side, crossing the timeline. Man-to-man defensive pressure employed by the Huskies. Hall right side corner into Trent Tucker. Tucker trying to drive around Bailey. It's the give and go. It goes down and low, but a violation called as Hall was driving along the baseline. We'll see what they're going to call. It's going to be an offensive charge on Mr. Mark Hall. So Minnesota goes over the limit. Lucky break for Corny Thompson, who picked up the offensive. Had it gone the other way, that would have been number four for Cornelius, and he might have seen some early bench action. And right now, Thompson will go to the line. Let's remind you, the Huskies, number one in the nation in free throw shooting. And they're going to need it coming down the stretch here. They're down by 14 points with 7 minutes and 14 seconds to go here in this contest. Seemingly out of it, but you never know. Since both teams are over the limit, if the Huskies can keep from fouling and Minnesota starts fouling, which would probably not be to Minnesota's advantage, Thompson misses. Rebound by Brewer. You don't figure Minnesota's going to be fouling very much. Matter of fact, they might take this time to just take the ball out. McKay almost strips the ball from Mitchell. Mitchell finally crosses half court with it. McKay's defense improving immensely as the season goes on. Pass down low to Brewer. Turn around over. Alex Sinis. He misses. Rebound by the big man. Chuck Alex Sinis pulls down the board. Gives it over to Doolin. Doolin running the break. Right side to Bailey. Bailey in the corner to Thompson. Thompson gets it down low to Alex Sinis. He misses it as the pass goes over Alex Sinis' head. Controlled by Hall. Hall bringing it back the other way. Hall stops the circle, now dribbles the ball around, looking at left side for his teammate Gary Holmes, this time going to the right side for Tucker, and he gives him a nice bounce pass. Tucker being guarded by Bailey, bounce pass, top to Keita Holmes, down low to Brewer, Brewer looking along the baseline, gets it back to Holmes, who's posted up high. Holmes over to Mark Hall, Hall left side over to Tucker again, and they're just passing the ball around, looking for the open shot. This ball goes down low to Holmes again, Holmes being guarded by Thompson, he's going to have to watch it, he has three fouls already, pass to Brewer, the hook, and he hits. Brewer over Alex Innes. Chuck not doing a very good job on defense, either denying the ball or not letting Brewer shoot. For him tonight, 14 points on the year. Brewer averaging 15. He's the leading scorer for this team. But the main uh, attraction has been Trent Tucker. Huskies with the ball. Bailey drives, puts it off the glass, and he misses. Bailey thinking he should have slam dunked it instead, put it off the glass and missed. Huskies down by 16 points, and right now with 5.52 to go, Minnesota has the ball, and they're looking at a very comfortable lead. Backdoor pass to Tucker, and he hits. 18-point Minnesota lead. The crowd is stunned. The Huskies have only scored 16 second-half points in 15 minutes of play. 31 points registered for Trent Tucker and a timeout on the court. With 5 minutes and 44 seconds to go in a regulation play, in 5 minutes and 44 seconds left to go in one of these two teams' seasons, the score Minnesota 67, Connecticut 49. We will be back right after this. 5.36 to go. Alex in his second shot. Up and also good. 67 to 51. Connecticut down by 16 points. 14 on the night for Chuck Alex in his. Brewer gets the ball in the inbounds. Huskies full court man to man. Brewer now dribbling up the court. Dishes it off to teammate Daryl Mitchell. Mitchell passes across to Brewer one more time and Brewer gets it to Trent Tucker. And Tucker now dribbling the ball around, trying to waste some time. Tucker over to Hall. Hall going up the middle. Throws the ball up. No good off the backboard. Off the leg of Norman Bailey. It goes out of bounds. Much to the crowd's displeasure, but a very good call by the referee. As Minnesota will inbound it underneath their own basket. This is Mitchell looking to get it into Brewer, and he does so. Brewer quickly passes it over to a man who could dribble the ball, Trent Tucker. Tucker being guarded by Bailey. Left side over to Mitchell. Mitchell down low to Brewer. He goes right around Alex Sinison, jams it. Poor play again by Chuck. 69 to 51, 5 minutes and 5 seconds to go, 16 points on the night for Brewer. Jumper by Thompson hits, Cornelius Thompson coming up with his 10th point of the night, he finally hits double digits, and Minnesota coming back the other way, almost lost the ball is Mark Hall, but he regains it, he's being guarded by Doolin, Doolin looking to steal it from the behind, passing the right side over to Andy Thompson who's checking the game, down low to Brewer, and he puts a jumper over Alex and it's one more time. Alex Sinis seemingly not playing any defense at all as Brewer, who is seven foot two, three inches taller than Thompson, is pulled in his 18th point, and he is just scoring at will. Al McGuire might consider him for the all aircraft carrier. I'd probably put him on my all, all vice god team myself. He's tough. Bailey drives a nice play up and in as he cut the lane, split two players. 71 to 55. Connecticut down by 16 points. 424 to go. Bailey's fourth point of the night. Hall dribbling the ball around. Man to man defense. Doolin steals it, knocks away. Thompson regains it. Up to Mike McKay, a two-on-one break. McKay over to Doolin, but Doolin can't control it. And the Gophers come up with it again on the turnover. A three-on-one break. This is Tucker over to Mitchell. Back to Tucker over Thompson. No good. This is Hall, and he puts it in. It's getting out of hand right now. The Huskies are down by a bundle. 18 points. With four minutes to go, 12 points for Mark Hall. The Huskies are dead. 
This is Mike McKay. Passes it and stolen by Tucker. Another turnover. Long pass to Hall. And Hall slows it up. Gets it into another teammate. But he was followed by Doolin. And it looks like Randy Smith called it right on the nose. He said if the Huskies are going to lose, they're going to lose it big. And right now they're down by 18 points. Nobody's wasting any time to get out there and make sure they clean the snow off their car. And uh, this place is emptying out rather quickly as the Huskies are getting blown out right now by 18. This packed Hartford Civic Center, which sold out in only three hours, now being cleared away. Mark Hall, who shoots 60% from the line, trying to up the goal for lead from 18 points. Hall hits. Harold, who would you give an MVP award to tonight? I mean, oh, it would be very tough to pick an MVP tonight. Only Mr. Trent Tucker has scored 31 points. A tough team. They only go about six deep on the bench. All we saw is Peterson and Mitchell. Hall hits another one. Also, Andy Thompson has just checked into the game. 14 points for Mark Hall. Too bad we can't give him a $1,000 uh, <laughs> award to the man of the school, but unfortunately we can't. Alex Sinis down low from Bailey, and he hits 75-57. to 57. 18 point lead. Coming back the other way is Minnesota. This is Thompson. Thompson over to Mitchell. Mitchell down low over to Tucker. He lays it off the glass for two and Tucker is just amazing. I think we could give him the uh, Harold and Mark's fair change award. I got 37 cents on me. How much I got, got 55. So a nice award. 32 points. Make that 33 points. And McKay comes back the other way. Puts in a basket 77 to 59. Minnesota coming back the other way. It's just being a run-and-gun contest. Minnesota not holding it up at all. They just want to keep scoring. There it looks like they're going to go on to third-round action in the NIT. Remember, the uh, Minnesota team in the first round defeating Drake 90-77. to They are defeating the Huskies rather handily here by 18 points. This is Mark Hall, left corner over to Thompson. Thompson thinking about shooting. This is Andy Thompson, not Cornelius Thompson. Bounce pass from the left corner to Trent Tucker. Tucker with 33 points. Amazing. Right side over to Andy Thompson one more time. Thompson bounce pass to Tucker. He lays it up and in. Tucker, number 35, 79 to 59. Two and a half minutes to go in the Husky season. Just come right side over to Mike McKay. McKay lays it off the backboard. No good. A foul called on the play. And McKay will go to the line to shoot. Foul on number 45. Brewer, but they were going to have a hand for Trent Tucker, who is now checking out of the game. And he gets a fine hand. He has played himself a fine game. We have a timeout on the court. So with 2 minutes and 23 seconds remaining in the game, the score of Minnesota 79, Connecticut 59. We'll be back right after this. 2 minutes and 23 seconds to go in the Husky season. They came in with 11 straight wins, but they're going to finish it off with a 9-9 and record in their last 18 games. They're going to finish up the season 20-9. and nine. Minnesota, meanwhile, coming back, they are going to have a 19-10 and 10 record after this game, and they are going to go on to third-round action versus uh, any one of a number of teams playing in the NIT. Remember, Dayton is playing at Purdue, Toledo at Michigan, South Alabama at Georgia, Alabama at Duke, Temple at West Virginia, Holy Cross at Syracuse, and Texas El Paso at Tulsa. We don't know exactly who's winning any of those games. We heard Syracuse is winning at halftime up at the Carrier Dome. But other than that, we are not sure what is going to happen. 2.23 to go. McKay is on the line, shooting 81% from the free throw stripe. And the Huskies down by 20 points. All kinds of happy fans leaving the uh, Hartford Civic Center tonight. McKay misses the first. So the Huskies, who are number one in free throw shooting in the country, going stone cold from the line, but it really doesn't matter. They are down by 20 points. I'm surprised we haven't seen some substitution action. I'm sure Jimmy Sullivan and Craig Wood would like to get in there. And McKay hits his second shot. A substitute coming in the game. Bobby Doolin, the only senior on this team, will be coming into play his last two minutes and 23 seconds as a Connecticut Husky. 15 points so far tonight for Mike McKay. Checking out is Vern Giscom. So we have Doolin in the backcourt with Glenn Miller, who's seeing his first action of the night. Mike McKay, Bruce Kaczynski, and Chuck Alexinis as Minnesota is controlling the ball. Mark Hall cro crossing the timeline. Pass the ball on the right side to a sub who came into the game, Bruce Kalpa. Kalpa is a Woodbury, Minnesota resident. He is a sophomore. And we have a whistle on the play down low, and we're going to have a foul on the Huskies. Bruce Kaczynski, away from the wall, picks up his fourth foul. And going to the line will be Randy Brewer. Interesting to note here on the Minnesota lineup that they only have three players that hail from Minnesota. I should say two that hail from Minnesota, a couple from Michigan. And we have three Florida boys, a Massachusetts boy, and one from the Nassau Bahamas, that being 
Andy Thompson. So if you don't come from Minnesota or Michigan, they go a long way to pick him up. He knows where to recruit. Florida, he gets a nice, nice 10. Brewer hits it. the first, misses the second, but regains his own rebound, throws up a shot and misses. Alex Sinis pulling down this rebound. Two minutes and six seconds to go. Doolin crossing half court, passing left side to Miller. Miller back out to Doolin. Doolin looking to go again, back to Miller. Miller open from 25, it's off the rim, no good. Rebound by Peterson. Peterson now is it to Mark Hall, but Peterson's going to get called for steps. The ball will go the other way, and re-entering the game will be Zebedee Howell for Randy Brewer. Brewer played himself a fine game, picking up 19 points. Jimmy Sullivan checks into the lineup for the Huskies. Number 10, Bobby Doolin leads. The senior co-captain gets a nice standing ovation from the crowd. And a hug from Don Perno. This is Bobby Doolin's last game as a Connecticut Husky. Doolin, the senior from Milford, Connecticut, a transfer from Penn State. And I'm sure he'd rather remember it for the 16 points against South Florida he had the other night. McKay loses the ball, but Kaczynski regains it. Turnaround jumper from inside the circle, and he hits. 80 to 62. Huskies down by 18 points with 1 to 44 to go in their season. Mitchell crosses half court. Kaczynski picks up his first two points of the night. Mitchell, top of the key to Mark Hall. The rest is academic. Kalpa touches it over to Peterson. Peterson open from the foul line, and he hits. 82 to 62. The Huskies being blown out for their largest margin of the season. Peterson hits his first two points tonight. Before this, Villanova took him by 11. McKay driving baseline, but he was fouled by Peterson. 121 to go. The Big Ten team from Minnesota really sticking it to the Huskies. It's really sad to see as they started off so well with an 11 game winning streak in the outset of the season but remember everyone is returning except Bobby Doolin and we're going to have two more top notch recruits, Blutcher from New York and Buckaloo Brian Buckaloo, the six four and a half inch guard from New Jersey McKay misses the foul shot again and coming down with the ball is Minnesota, this is Mitchell, he drives up and in, it's called offensive foul call, we'll see if the basket counts no basket, offensive foul on Mitchell, he wanted to get his name in the scorebook 82-62, and the Huskies will take the ball out underneath their own basket. And that was pretty interesting basket. right there. We started with a minute 13 when we uh, inbounded the ball under the hoop, and not a second ticked off the clock as they took the ball down. So, Well, I told you Mitchell was fast, but that was incredibly <laughs> fast. Lightning fast. Craig Wood checks into the game for the Huskies, so it's garbage time right now. A minute nine to go, and it's almost over. Sullivan wants his name in the books. He misses the shot. Rebound tapped up by McKay, but he'll be called for a foul. And the referee's just going to keep the... Uh, agony going for the Huskies and won't let them get out of here without uh, keeping him here till at least 10 o'clock, giving the fans at least their two hours worth. It's got to be tough for the scrubs too, they come in to play the last minute or so a guy like Sully, I'm sure he wants to get a few points in and not go out there and be totally embarrassed. And it's been uh, quite a year for Jim Sullivan, he is not very happy with the year he has I'm sure Glenn Miller is not very happy but Sullivan is a junior he'll have one more year to go, he won't do him any good to transfer. You never know about Glenn Miller, though. Foul shot missed, and Miller comes up with the ball from a pass from Kaczynski. He drives three on two to oh, Sullivan in the corner. Oh, to no oh. good. Rebound McKay. He, jam, he almost oh. gets it. He misses the jam. And that's the way this game is going for the Huskies. Mitchell streaks down the court, puts in the layup. 84 to 62 as Mitchell scores. 45 seconds to go. Four points for Mitchell. Miller coming back the other way. And it goes down low to Kaczynski. Kaczynski puts the turnaround jumper in. I got to see Sully in the uh, column now. 34 seconds to go, 84 to 64. Kalpa dribbling the ball. Sullivan guarding him. Pass on the left side into the corner for Howell. Howell down low to Hall. Hall looking to go around Miller. He goes long baseline. Blocked by Miller out of bounds. 21 seconds left in the season. And what a season it's been. We started off with Yale way back on December 6th. And we're all the way down to March 16th, the day before St. Patty's Day. Howell again down low. He misses. And he uh, picks up his own rebound. He throws up a shot off the uh, backboard. No good rebound by Mike McKay. Huskies on a five-on-two break. McKay pulls up from the foul line, and he misses. Rebound Miller. Miller turn around, jump, and he hits. Five seconds to go, 84 to 66. Two seconds, one. And that is the season for the Connecticut Huskies. Randy Smith called it right. 18 points, Harold. The final score, Minnesota 84, Connecticut 66. We'll be back with a wrap-up right after this timeout. Harold Derrick back at the Hartford Civic Center with Mark Boudreau and our statistician Robin Tarby. The final score was Minnesota 84, Connecticut 66. The Huskies losing their nine of their last 18 games after 11 quick wins to finish up the season at 29. Minnesota, meanwhile, advancing to the third round of the National Invitational Tournament. 
upping their record to 19 and 10. Here is the unofficial scoring statistics. Take it away, Mark. Robin, I don't know how you read this, but Trent Tucker, no doubt, was the big man. 35 big ones, and then he was fouled by Brewer with 19. They had some even scoring down the line. Mark Hall had 14. Then to wrap it up, Gary Holmes had 8, and uh, Howell had 4. Two men with two were Mitchell and Peterson. For the Huskies, the dismal Huskies, it was a tough one. Chuck Alexinas started off like a rocket. He had 16 for the Huskies. Mike McKay added 15. Corny Thompson, 10. Bobby Doolin, his last game as a Husky, he had 9. Going down the line, Norman Bailey could only add four. He had a lot of tough breaks. Vernon Giscom added six. And we had uh, two points from Bruce Kaczynski. So, Harold, any closing comments here? And quite a blowout by Minnesota. 22 big ones, 84-66. Their biggest loss of the season previous to this, Villanova took them by 11 points. The Huskies very close at halftime. It looked like it was going to be a seesaw game. I thought the Huskies might be able to take Minnesota, but they came out like a rocket. They quickly upped their lead to 10 points within two minutes of play. Huskies not getting on the board for the first three minutes, and before they woke up, they were down by double digits for all of the second half. Huskies making a few runs, one on a big dunk by Mike McKay, and another on a basket by another player. The name uh, does not hit me right away off the bat, but the Huskies, with the crowd behind them, could not muster up enough to come back and win this contest. Next up on the Sound Alternative will be Panorama.